And now set to make his way to the ring, Showtime, Sean Borden. Sean Porter has been trained by his father, Ken, for his entire career. Ken was just 18 when Sean was born, and uh, they've said they're more like brothers than father's son. Porter, football player in high school, and he was a good one, too. Stowe Monroe Falls High back in Ohio. It's the same school that Larry Zaka attended. Says he's in the best shape of his life as he prepares to face the ever talkative Adrian Broner and Porter said yesterday that he prefers to let his actions do the talking when it comes to getting into the ring. Now making his way to the ring, Adrian, the problem, Broner. Well, you can count on Broner to make his uh, normal grand entrance in a matter of speaking. 25 years old, beaten only once in his career, and he thinks he is the heir apparent to Floyd Mayweather, even though he calls Mayweather his big brother. The two have trained together at Mayweather's gym in Las Vegas. Former champion in three divisions and considers himself both a pro boxer and a professional entertainer. But uh, despite the flashiness, he says that he trains as if he's broke to give himself the sense of urgency to be ready to fight. And uh, he feels he is the uh, centerpiece of a new era in boxing, Adrian Broner. And the tail of the tape being brought to you by Corona. Broner is up to 157 tonight after the weigh-in yesterday. So these guys picking up uh, a lot of weight. The rehydration process over the past 24 hours or so. It's for 12 rounds, a welterweight bout the rules. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref can halt it. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the fight is official after four rounds. There is your tail of the tape. From the MGM Grand Garden Arena, live on NBC, Premier Boxing Champions now presents the main event, 12 rounds of action in the welterweight division. The three judges at ringside, Adelaide Bird, Eric Cheek, and Dave Moretti, and the referee in charge of the action, Tony Weeks. And now, introducing first the red corner. He wears the blue, gold, and red. His professional record near perfect. 25 wins, just one loss with one draw. 16 victories coming by way of knockout. Originally from Cleveland, Ohio, he fights out of Las Vegas, the former welterweight champion, Showtime, Sean Porter. And across the ring, his adversary fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the gold and white. As a professional, he too stands near perfect. 30 victories, just one loss, 22 wins. Coming by way of knockout from Cincinnati, Ohio, the three division former champion, Adrian the Problem Broner. Okay, gentlemen, you both received your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, right here is good, aim to be that's low. Right here is good, aim for me that's low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. Adrian Broner at 30 and 1, 22 by knockout, although we have not seen the power in recent fights. His last bout here at the Grand Garden in Las Vegas and on NBC early March that unanimous 12 round decision over John Molina who never did get into it Sean Porter 25 and 1 with one
draw 16 by knockout his last fight back in mid-March. He knocked out Eric Bonet in round five. Bonet a late substitute for, yes, Roberto Garcia, who reportedly was at least four or five pounds overweight. Previous bout for Porter lost his title in a bloody fight, a majority decision. Defeat to uh, Kel Brook of England. Both fights were, both fighters were cut from accidental butts. And that is Porter's only defeat. Round one of 12. First round, big round. I mean, this is like guys trying to feel each other out. Trying to get comfortable in the ring. They both are nervous, although they would not say that. They are nervous. Uh, there's a lot on the line here. Um, this is about bragging rights, authority. Just a matter of time here before these guys are able to land solid punches. Stop, stop, stop. And I like, step Ray, back, how you back. said, you know, neither guy will admit it. Both guys still a little nervous, trying to fill each other out. So much has been riding up to this point. The press conferences, the media, so much talking. So, you know, both guys got a lot to prove tonight. And these days, fights between former champions in their 20s is is relatively rare, as we mentioned earlier for Broder. This is only the third time he's fought as a welterweight. Here comes Porter, went to the body. The rush move by Porter. I got to stop, stop, let him go, let him go. Watch Big it, left hook it, by Sean it, Porter there. You saw Adrian Broder pulling out with his hands down. Pulled straight out, got caught on the chin with a left hook by Sean Porter. And you see the physical strength of Adrian on the inside immediately grabbing onto Sean because he was affected by that punch rate. And Broner has gotten off to slow starts, followed by strong finishes. So perhaps Porter trying to take advantage as Marcos Maidana did. And that convincing win over Broner knocked him down a couple of times. Broder did what was expected and anticipated the fact he had grabbed on to clear his head to really gain uh, the edge here. Kind of get, you notice, he, I mean, he's actually holding. Stop, 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 stop. He's actually holding his man. And now the referee, Tony Weeks, able to get them apart. Left hand didn't have much on it, but it did connect stop, stop, stop. Let go. on Let Broder. This type of fight is going to be effective for Porter to make it physical. <laughs> so that's it for round one. Nice shot by Sean Porter. And Porter will look to get close, be very physical as we saw in that first round. A fast pace against Broner would favor Porter. Our unofficial score, Steve Farhood had it a 10-9 for Porter. I agree with Steve, Marv. Nobody got a lot done in that first round. They were doing a lot of feeling out, but Porter landed that nice left hook and uh, took control, took the momentum for a second. And Braun is really trying to figure out the timing of Porter's punches. He's waiting. He's waiting for the opportunity to really get to time it because that's when he comes into play because of his hand speed. He's waiting to time those punches. Oh, stop, 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 you see him coming stop. with that counter left hook every time Porter does anything. Porter can shoot the jab, it's a left hook, the right hand left hook. What Porter's doing very well, he's dropping underneath that shot and it's getting Adrian off balance, so he can't come back with a second punch. And right with that left hook, that miss, we saw the hand stop, speed stop, stop. Exactly. of uh, Broner. He's such a natural, he's a gifted boxer. I mean, I mean, you can't argue with that. He has great hand speed, power, and, and heart, and a chin. And he proved that against his first loss against Madonna. Broder in the white. I will not attempt to describe those particular trunks. And Porter in the blue. Stop, 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 stop. See, Adrian grabbed onto the right leg of Sean Porter right there, doing something to kind of discourage him. Both guys having troubles finding their range. Either guy can establish his jab and start to shoot more combinations to set one another up. Nice counter right hand by Adrian there, Mark. And a right hand from Porter. Stop, 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 stop. And on the, on the clinch, 
Throw to try to get a punch in. Porter has to be very careful because as he reaches in, that's when Brawler can counter that with the right hand or left hook. You notice his hands, Porter, hand, he comes in with his hands down. Now he has Broder against the ropes. We'll see if Tony Weeks continues to let Adrian Broner just grab a hold of Sean and hold him like that. You know, that's something I think Tony's going to have to take control of. Nice shot by Sean Porter. Big right hand, and then try to go to it again. You see Adrian to make sure to really push the head down to Sean Porter when he gets inside, gets close, so he can't come up with combinations. Hit more action in this second round. Shimano's style. You saw Paul Pierce. Now there's the real truth. I know Errol Spence calls himself the truth. And I asked him yesterday, was there a fee involved <laughs> to pay the future Hall of Famer of the Washington Wizards? In the second round, I noticed that Bruno was really, again, I got to say this over and over again, he's trying to time Porter as he comes in with his hands down. Stop, 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 stop. Porter has to be aggressive, though. He has to be overly aggressive and turn this thing into a street fight. He's being aggressive. You see Adrian, that's the second time he's lifted up that right forearm, and he's put it right in the throat of Sean Porter. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what Tony Weeks does when they get in those clinches and, and Adrian, if he continues to do that. But Adrian knows he has to be physical with Sean when he gets on the inside. He's really setting a tone early in the fight to say, hey, listen, you can't just come in. I'm going to touch you with something. And once Porter gets inside, he has let both of those hands go. He's trying, but it's very difficult when Adrian's got pushing your head down and then also got that forearm in your throat. It can be very tough. So Adrian's doing the right tactics, but we'll see how long he's able to get away with those tactics. That left hand from Porter stop, just stop, 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 did miss. Stop. And again, Tony Weeks, a very busy referee. And he just told Brony, you got to watch that holding. That was a firm warning, Marv. He told him, hey, listen, stop the holding. He took a break. He didn't just mention it in between the clinch. He actually stopped the action for a second, so. See Sean moving his head as he comes forward. It's distracting Adrian just enough to where it frees him to where he doesn't get those combinations off. A little bit of head movement from Sean Porter. Very uh, effective so far. I mean, if Porter can keep this up the entire fight, it could be good. You just, but I just don't want him to walk in there with his hands down. It seems, Ray, like he's got his hands up, but when he shoots one punch, it's allowing Adrian to get the counter shots off. If he shoots two and three, it'll make uh, Adrian's life a lot more difficult. I mean, for him to just stay in the chest of Broner would really be effective. Use that strength. Once again, Broder tying up Let go. Porter. Coming up on 10 seconds remaining in round three. Sean says that he and his dad kind of zone into each other. If you're with us right at the start of the fight, said they become one mind and one vision as they hug right before the fight gets underway. This is is round four. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. Let him go. Let him go. Very good tactic by Adrian. Every time they get close, he extends those arms and really puts that forearm underneath the throw to Sean Porter. It doesn't allow Sean to get off, so very smart by, by Adrian. And this was something we talked about before the fight. Porter's got to get inside. When he gets inside, he's got to work. A big roundhouse right. But that looked like a slip by Broder. And now here comes Porter. This is what ha this is really good for Porter. Broder just trying to get away. Just turn this into a street fight. Stop, 
you see Adrian really holding on the inside. I mean, he's really grabbing a hold of him hard in there. It's Blake. Porter has been the aggressor right from the start. And once again, they have to be separated. What I like about Broner is the fact that he has this natural radar, this incredible radar. He's able to step those punches. Here again, he's tying his man up, which was expected. We have Hall of Fame referee Steve Spoker All with us. Steve, what is your All evaluation of what uh, what is going on here in I terms of how Tony Weeks is handling things? Uh, Tony's an excellent referee, but I think he's too liberal with Adrian. All we have seen is four rounds of fouls and holding and forearms. Uh, there should be points starting to be taken away because he hasn't engaged. And again, you see the hold yeah, by Broder. Let's it. see how Weeks That's handles it. this one. No. That's it. Looked like he'd take a point away, but apparently did not. And you see Adrian's got that left hand behind the head of Sean Porter, and that's how he's able to hold. And sometimes he'll get it underneath, and sometimes he'll get it on top. So, you know, Tony's going to take control. He always does, but a lot of holding so far through the first four rounds, Rick. You know, uh, I'm looking here. Yeah, here, here once again, the, well, it was anticipated. The holding and clenching, which is smart from bonus standpoint. And this is exactly where Sean Porter's got to be right there. You see, he's getting his hands free. He's digging the body of Adrian and finishing back up top. Adrian's looking to hold on because he doesn't like Sean Porter being that close to him. Once again, it's Sean Porter as the aggressor. And that is it for round four. Neither guy wants to let the other guy impose his will, so Adrian's definitely trying to hold Sean when he gets close, but Sean had a lot more success in that last round. Broder got a good left hand in to open up round five. And round four, Porter threw 65 punches, landing 19. Broder throwing 21 and landed six, a 19-6 edge in that department. And you see a much more alert Adrian Broner coming out here in this fifth round. He jumped off a stool, ran out of the corner, and touched on a couple shots early. Uh, let's check in with Kenny. Bring it! All right, thank you, Marv. I'm with Kenny Porter, Sean's trainer and his father. What do you think of the fight so far, Kenny? I think we're doing good. We did, the plan played out like we wanted the first two rounds to get him to get confident that we weren't coming after him, that he would fight a little bit. And it's playing out that way for me. What do you think is going to happen now the rest of the way that works out for your son? Uh, we're going to overwhelm him. We're just going to take control. We're going to wear him down. Are you going to finish this fight, you think? We're going to wear him down. We're going to wear him down. We're All right. Wear him down. Thanks, Kenny. Marv. And that is exactly what Sean Porter has been doing to this point. And guys, you know, the Porter camp brought in Sugar Shane Mosley to work on how one can work their way out of clinches. So they, they kind of knew what was coming up. And Porter has landed twice, and rather has thrown twice as many power punches. You know, definitely a smart move for Team Porter to bring Shane Mosley into camp, but Adrian Broner's having a much better round this, the beginning of this round. He came out really sharp and was landing some nice shots. So, Sean's got to move Adrian back to the ropes, get him trapped there, bang the body, finish up top. It's been a pretty fast pace for both fighters. In fact, he's doing the right thing for Porter, staying aggressive and staying in his chest. And for Broner, Broner has yet to figure out the timing of Porter. Oh, and Porter's a very difficult guy to figure out, Ray. You see how he's herky-jerky, he moves his yes. head coming in, he starts at the bottom, comes up top, so he is very difficult in uh, Broner's defense. Stop. I got you, let him go. But I think Broner started this fifth round very nice. He came out very sharp with a jab and nice counter shots, and uh, on my scorecard, he's, he's ahead so far through this fifth round. I mean, in this fifth round. Now Porter gets to the body. Once again, Broder on, a, on his bicycle. And you can hear the booing from this, this crowd. Same kind of reaction he had when he fought Molina several months back here in Las Vegas.
In Broner's corner, it's a combination of Mike Stafford out of Cincinnati, known for his excellent work with amateur fighters, and Nate Jones, who is a co-trainer for Floyd Mayweather. All right, Steve, what do you see to this point? Well, Marv, it's an ugly fight, and sometimes ugly fights make for ultimately ugly scorecards. Um, it's Porter won the third and fourth and the first very clearly. Uh, Broner, I think I agree with BJ, took the fifth round by landing shots as Porter came in. So it's very important as you judge these, fight, these kind of rounds to try to discern which punches are effective because it's a very, very sloppy fight. So you have a quarter by one, 48-47 through, through five. And Porter has, has come out strong here in the sixth. Now Sean gets him in close. He's trying to work the body. Adrian puts the hands behind the head of Sean and then pushes off. So he didn't actually grab hold that time. But he's not comfortable in there, Marvin. He's got to stay on the outside if he wants to win this fight. He's sharp on the outside tonight. Well, yep. Bob, being an ugly fight, you know, Porter's, Porter, Porter's really doing the right thing. All those angles, throwing punches from all directions. What if, what if the way he ran up to him? All this is quite confusing. Yep. And as sharp as Broner is, he's very accurate with his combination and his counterpunching. Whenever you move your head and change levels like that when you're coming in, it makes your job very difficult to counterpunch. So, you know, like you said, Ray, beautiful point. A sloppy fight is a good fight for Porter. And these are the kind of fights I like to see. You know, one guy wins one round, the next guy comes back and wins the other round. That's when you know you got a good fight. You know, Porter's very strong. I mean, he's physically strong. And his jab has been effective when he uses it. And Ray, you saw that press conference that took place a couple days ago as Broder referred to Porter as just a football player. He was an excellent football player in high school. And he's a terrific all-around athlete. He was also a track man. And we saw that run up just a moment ago a great athlete by far oh, you see the jab once again Beautiful work by Sean Porter. Right when Kenny Porter said, hey, give me that jab, Sean Porter gave it to Adrian right in the nose. And that was a hard jab, Ray. And following round six, Al Michaels will be talking with heavyweight titleist Deontay Wilder coming off his first defense. Knocked out of the very game. Eric Molina last weekend in Birmingham. Let's go to Al. And I think 2016 would, it would, would, could be a perfect year for that to happen. He got a lot of mentors that he'll have to fulfill, and I'm doing my thing as well, too. But I'm a guy that believes in, in, in patience and, 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 and due time. And so I think that timing will happen real soon. Right, you want to say roll tide once? Hey, roll tide, baby. <laughs> Deontay Wilder, thanks, man. Back tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Al. Al had the contract, the NBC contract, and pen in his pocket, <laughs> ready to go. This is round seven, scheduled for 12. And that is the unofficial scorecard. Porter, according to Steve Farhood, took round six, 10, nine, and has a two-point lead here at round seven. And I think, Marv, this is a very big round for both fighters because I gave Sean the last round, I gave Adrian the round before that. You want to see one fighter get momentum and start to win a couple rounds in a row. So it shows it's a really good close fight. And if you're Sean Porter or Adrian Broner, you really want to try to win this seventh round. All right, let's go to Daniel Jacobs. Daniel. Well, Marv, they're pleading with Broner to use that jab. The key is to use that natural ability that he has and not just don't learn to counter punch him as he's doing some tactics here. But what Adrian Broner needs to do is just go back to using that jab up and down and defusing the ball because Porter is coming in at will. Once again, Tony Weeks appeared to be looking at the judges, but I apparently did not take a point away. That, that's a punch we've never seen. Over the head. Let's bring in Steve Smoker. Should he have taken that point away, Steve? Absolutely. Absolutely. Twice behind the head. Definite foul. 
And you know, Marv, I think any time there's an intentional foul, you obviously got to take a point away. But I don't know if it was uh, – I, I couldn't really get a good angle from where I was sitting if he if he was really – it was more of a backhand or a, a, a violent, uh, you know, hit right behind the head. So I couldn't really tell. But <laughs> I think it's frustration from Adrian Broner. You know, normally Broner would have figured out his opponent and really come on strong. But because of the strength of Porter and the dedication and the ferocity, he's making this very difficult for Adrian Broner. The fact that Porter has no, 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 severely no, 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 outpunched no, 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 no. Broner, can he punch up, himself back, out? Is that a danger? From this point on the seventh round, I don't think he can. I think he's in tremendous shape. Bro, stop, stop, stop. Here we go. I think he does have a chance to get more tired, though, if Tony Weeks doesn't start to control no, no. the holding of Adrian inside, pushing uh, Sean's head down. That can wear a fighter out over 12 rounds. So that's it for round seven. And as you heard, Hall of Fame referee Steve Smoker was with us. For rules interpretations, he said he would have taken a point away from Broder. And uh, Steve Farhood had that as a 10-9 round for Broder. Sean Porter, 27 years old, says he's representing Northeast Ohio. Record of 25 and 1 1 draw, 16 by knockout. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Let him up, let him up. And Adrian Broder, who comes off the, the win over John Molina. 30 and 1, 22 by knockout, but most of those knockouts have not come as of late. In his earlier days, he had 10 first round KOs. And getting back to the possibility of the referee, Tony Weeks taking a point away in a fight like this that is apparently so close, that point could be so critical. Nice counter left hook by Adrian on the inside. You see Sean starting to work to get on the inside. Starting to slow down just a little bit though, Ray. And when he's getting inside, it's creating little openings for Adrian to counter with that left hook. So uh, Adrian's also a physically strong fighter himself, even if his knockout percentage has gone down a little bit as he's moved up in weight. And, and Marv asked me, asked me about the uh, training and about the endurance of this guy. I mean, he, Porter is so amazing because he told me yesterday about his training regimen. He does a pre-fight camp, then a fight camp, then a post-fight camp. I mean, he's so dedicated that he'll need that endurance in these later rounds. No, oh, he's always in shape, right? There's no question about that. Just got to see if he's able to put his game plan to use here. He's, you know, a few rounds ago, he was able to get inside and really work against Adrian. It seems like Adrian's getting a little more space and getting more comfortable with those counter left hooks now. I see Adrian getting into a bit of a rhythm here in round eight. I mean, the pace has been so fast that I expected him to slow down a little bit. But um, Porter has not slowed down. Still aggressive, still in the chest of Broner. And as Broner told us uh, yesterday, he, he claimed he would not be bothered by the fast pace, but he was early on, the pace that Porter okay, set. Stop, stop, Broner stop, stop, is so gifted. I mean, really, this young man can really fight, has so, so many incredible uh, natural attributes, physical attributes. He just has to use them right now, for sure. Oh, left hand. Landed by Porter. So that is the end of round eight. Up and coming, welterweight Errol Spence pounding Phil LaGreco to the body, and he scored an emphatic stoppage in the third round. Spence now 17-0 in that junior middleweight matchup. Terrell Gachet, a 2012 Olympic teammate of Spence, knocked down Lewis Grajeda en route to scoring that unanimous eight-round decision. So Gachet goes to 15-0, and it has been a wild one with Porter most aggressive, and we've seen Broner clinching, going to the ropes, trying to tie Porter up. And it is a, it appears to be a close bounce. 
it's just the power of Porter's left jab that's really being effective. Because normally, uh, Broner would counter with his right hand. And you see what allows Broner to counter, Ray. He takes that little slide step back, and it creates a little bit of space to shoot that right hand or that left hook. So he's got those great feet. Puts himself in position to land the hook or the right hand. And, uh, you know, like I said, I feel like he's gotten into a little bit of a rhythm over the last three rounds. Sean's got to disrupt that rhythm by moving forward, moving his head, touching Adrian to the body, and getting his hands free when he gets on the inside. Well, this is the power of his jab that knocks his, knocks out, knocks his head back. Porter trying to go to the body, and again, the clinch leads to Tony Weeks, separating the two boxers. But you see that, that looked like a fist sandwich from Broner. And on the clinch before, Mar, sorry to interrupt you, you just saw, you know, Adrian just blatantly grabbed him with both hands, and most referees will not allow that to take place like that. Tony Weeks, an experienced referee in his 20th year, Let's check it with Kenny Rice. Kenny. All right, thanks, Marv. With Mike Stafford in the Broner corner. Mike, the pace of this fight, is it going the way you thought it would? Yes, I thought it was. I thought we, you know, Chimes coming out strong, trying to strength strong. Now, we, now we're trying to take, pick him apart, using a jab, using a combination, letting him run into everything. How close do you think this fight is? Are you saying much to Adrian about that? It's, we tell him it's a, it's a close fight. We don't know what the judges do, but, you know, he, he looks like he's getting ready to be in his rhythm now. And uh, we're just trying to, you know, pick, make sure he uh, finishes the job. Thanks, Mike. Marv? Guys, do you agree with the thoughts of Mike Stafford? No. Um, I see Porter ahead. He's been more aggressive, effective aggressive, and uh, he's standing in his chest. Broner has not had an opportunity to really figure this out. He's not throwing a volume of punches. And this is the distance where Broner needs to stay. He needs to stay right on the outside. Use that jab. Whenever Sean rushes in, shoot the one or two counter punches and then get that distance again. Maintain that distance because Sean is very physically strong on the inside, like you said, Ray. This doesn't tell us the you. impact of the punches, but Porter has out-punched Broner 289 the power punches to 149. Mike Stafford did mention that uh, Broner has found his rhythm perhaps a bit more but it's still from my eyes that it's been all Porter you got to remember too Marv just because Sean is shooting more punches doesn't necessarily mean all the judges are going to score right. it for Sean they're still close rounds if Sean's coming forward he's shooting the punches but Adrian's landing some oh. a big right hand by Sean Porter there that landed square well that also tells you the the, the chin Oh, another hard hit by Porter. Adrian landed a nice counter left hook on the ropes there. And, you know, it just shows the toughness like Ray was saying. You know, Adrian's got a great chin, but immediately after he got hit with that big overhand right, he landed a nice counter left hook himself. You know, very sharp fighter, and both guys are very hungry. Remember, Adrian Broder went down twice against Marcos Maidana back in December 2013. That fight in in San Antonio the first two times in Broder's career that he hit the canvas. Porter, Porter now started to pose a little bit too long. He's waiting too long in the pocket, which will give Broner a chance. Sorry, Ray, he spins Broder around to get off the ropes. Beautiful straight right hand by Porter. He's been shooting the jab. He kind of walked Adrian Broner into that right hand, and uh, the foot movement is confusing Adrian step. a bit. Let him up, let him up, let him up, turn around. Coming up on a minute left of this 10th round. Hands free, hands free. Left hook landed by Broder. Reminder coverage of today's premier boxing champions will continue at 11 o'clock Eastern time on NBC SN. Log on to NBCSports.com to find the channel in your area. That'll be live boxing coming up 11 o'clock Eastern time.
And you see, Marvin, these close rounds like this, very important that both guys, when they're on the inside, when there's lull time, you free your hands and you continue to work to show the judges that you want those points and you want to land the harder shots. Good shot by Sean Porter. Adrian Broder holding again. Porter, tie him up. Just relentless. And goes down to his knees, looking to hold on to Porter. Oh, right hand by Porter. On to round 11, and Porter's had only two fights go past 10. He beat Devin Alexander in 12 rounds back in 2013 and lost to Kell Brook in 12 in 2014. That's the only loss in his professional career. Brook out of England won the title from Porter in a very bloody fight. And that coming off the stoppage of Paul Malignaggi in the fourth round in April of 2014 as Porter came up with two knockdowns in the fourth round to end the fight. You know, these two, two last rounds are big rounds, deciding factors here for both fighters, depending how they, the judges are scoring. And I've got Porter ahead, Ray, but I think that if you're in the corner of Adrian Broner, you know, you got to say, listen, you got to win both these rounds. But also, if you're in the corner of Sean Porter, you got to say, we need at least one or two of these last rounds to make sure that we really put a nail in the coffin. Be aggressive. Yes, stay aggressive. And as you saw, the unofficial scorecard of Steve Farhood, he has it 97 93 in favor of Porter. <laughs> and I guarantee all the judges have it scored somewhere in that range, Mark. But these last two rounds could really be a big factor in who wins this fight. I got you, I got you. Let him go, let him go. Step back, step back. There's a nice counter right hand by Broner. <laughs> Coverage of today's premier boxing champions will continue at 11 o'clock Eastern on NBCSN. That's live boxing. You can log out to NBCSports.com to find the channel in your area. I got you, let him go. We're approaching a minute left in the 11th, and again, you see the holding on the part of Broner. And he hears it from the crowd. Well, Steve, we talked about it uh, earlier in terms of the holding, the work along the ropes. There's a little spin around. This time it's uh, Porter doing the spinning. The Punch over the head on two occasions, but no points have been taken away. No referee would like to take a point, especially in the championship rounds, but uh, all Adrian is doing is uh, holding. So I think it, in this particular instance, it may be warranted, really. And you see Porter running after Broder, who again gets up against the ropes. Porter keeps coming. And more of a combination by Porter. You see Adrian pushing him down, trying to do anything to blunt the momentum of Porter. I think Tony's going to take a point right here. One point. Yes, he does. And you hear the reaction. One point home. Here we go. Come on. He's going to approach you now. Here we go. Time in. Let's go. Final seconds, round 11. That unofficial scorecard. Steve Farhood has Porter winning eight of the 11 rounds. Oh, oh. down goes Porter. Three, a left hook. Four, five, from Sean six, Porter. Seven. Hey, come in, come in, come in. Puts Porter okay, down. And this is boxing. Adrian Broner is a three-time world champion, and he came out in this 12th round and did exactly what he needs to do to get himself back in this fight. That was a big left hook right on the chin. Unbelievable. Broner did what champions do. You can never count a champion out. Surprising to us, up, to the go. fans, and to Porter. And we talked about that yesterday. Adrian's the one who's got the tendency to pull his right hand away from his face when that left hook comes. Stop, Sean stop, Porter stop, did stop. it right there, and Adrian Broner really made him pay. So Porter down for the first time in his career. 
A clean left hook, Mark, right on the chin. Picture perfect. You couldn't have drawn it up any better than that. And you just got to give credit to Adrian for losing two or three of the last rounds and coming out with that pin perfect shot. Sean's starting to get himself back together a little more here, but he was definitely hurt when he got up, right? That was a big shot by, by Broner. Sean's got to pick up his right hand to block that shot, and if he's not going to do that, he's got to drop underneath it because Adrian's really zeroed in on that punch right now. This shows you the patience of a fighter, the patience of Broner. He waited for that opportunity, and when it presented itself, he took full advantage of it. And Ray, I think he waited a little too long, though. You know, he was allowing Porter to get inside. He was trying to control him on the inside with his forearm and the holding, but Tony Weeks kind of stepped in and took control. Well, the style of Porter makes it quite difficult. It's hard to read him. A minute left in this 12th and final round. Sean needs to be very careful not to shoot one punch at a time here and leave himself susceptible to that lead left hook again. That counter left hook from Adrian. Don't leave any one punch out there. And it appears that Broder does need a knockout, a stoppage to win this fight. Let him up, let him up, let him up. Let him up. See Adrian pushing Sean's head down. You know, Port is doing the right thing. He's staying very close to Broder. Don't allow him to get hit. Smothering all of his big punches. All the and big that's a punches. good tactic by, by uh, Sean. It looks like Adrian had his chance. He had Sean in a lot of trouble, and Sean showed a lot of resolve to get out of that predicament, and uh, he should win this fight, Ray. We're down to 10 seconds remaining. Combination from Porter. And it's all over. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Adelaide Bird, sees the fight 114 to 112. Judge Dave Moretti sees the fight 115 to 111. Your third and final judge, Eric Cheek, scores the fight 118 to 108. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Showtime, Sean Borden.